Mafia Boy was only 15 at the time he shut down the internet. He targeted every major website in the year 2000 and caused roughly $1.7 billion in damages. This is the story of Mafia Boy. Michael Kaushi was born in Montreal, Canada in 1984 and didn't have a typical upbringing. His parents divorced when he was very young. He would live with his mother and spend time with his father on the weekends, a traditional divorce settlement. His father was a very successful businessman and was always very busy with meetings and phone calls. He couldn't give as much time and attention to Michael as he would have wanted. Additionally, Michael felt very alone being away from his friends on the weekends. So, to try and make Michael feel better and keep him busy, his dad bought him a computer at the age of six. When I was six, I barely was allowed to use any kind of technology, let alone own my own computer. Immediately, the digital world Michael had entered was so captivating, he didn't want to do anything else. Michael loved puzzles and building with Lego from a young age. He would never buy any Lego sets with instructions on how to build them. He would only buy the pieces with a blank canvas and would let his imagination run wild and create whatever he wanted to. Using the computer gave Michael a sense of power as he could control the computer to perform any requests he had commanded. Once he realized this, he would use the creativity of his Lego building mind to try and manipulate the computer. Originally, Michael's knowledge started off as nothing, but within only a few weeks of owning the computer, he was using DOS commands. DOS stands for Disk Operating System. He would find any information he could and try and absorb it to gain as much knowledge as possible. He would also enjoy playing video games. I mean, who doesn't? But a lot of the games he played didn't really keep him entertained. They weren't great in his opinion. Michael was nine years old when he managed to get a 30-day free trial of AOL, American Online. This was his first taste of the internet, where he could communicate with others online, have access to a wide range of information, and importantly, play online video games. There was only one problem with this. When the 30-day free trial would end, he would have to pay. Michael wasn't sure how to get the money. He didn't have any of his own, and he didn't think his dad would pay for it. Michael had to figure out a way to stay online for free. So, what did he do? Well, he began searching for a tool and managed to find a tool that's called, funnily enough, AO Hell. This tool had actually been used against him before. While he was being a nuisance in a chat room, someone used this tool to pun him off the internet. From this point on, he knew the tool was powerful and he could use it to keep internet access. Once he had the AO Hell tool, he would enter online chat rooms and use the tool to appear as an administrator and would simply ask people for their passwords. He made up a story where there was a power outage and he, as an administrator, had to confirm people's authenticity by confirming their password and people would just give the passwords to him. And from this point on, he basically had unlimited internet access. In the modern day, this would be considered a basic attempt at social engineering and would likely not work as people are aware of these hacking attempts. But in the 90s, people had no idea that instances like this could lead to breaches of any kind. This would mark as the first instance of Michael's journey as a cyber criminal. One day, Michael was looking around on IRC chat rooms, internet relay chat rooms, and noticed a hacking group was running the channel. He also noticed that the hacking group was recruiting hackers. This grabbed Michael's attention and he immediately contacted someone in the group asking to join. Originally, he got the client as they said they were only looking for hackers with experience. But Michael persisted and said that he was a very fast learner and asked them to give him a chance with what was essentially a trial period. They agreed to give Michael this trial. During this period of over two weeks, Michael was given several tasks to complete and would manage to complete them all. Michael had proven he is a fast learner and would be accepted into the group. The hacking group he joined was called TNT Force, an elite Russian hacking group who were very serious. Michael would become close with the members of the hacking group. They began to mentor him and really educate him on how to use hacking effectively. Michael was 13 years old when he joined the group and everyone in the group 
knew him as the name Mafia Boy, which originally came from his brother. One day, when he went to use his computer, he didn't check what username he was using online and eventually realized it was his brother's username, Mafia Boy. Michael grew attached to this name. It seemed to be very fitting for an up-and-coming online hacker. All members of TNT Force had a role in the group, and Michael's main role was to hack into other sites and networks to use their bandwidth for their own purpose. One of those purposes was to create a XDCC bot. This bot was hosted on the stolen network's bandwidth and would offer users to be able to play games and run programs through the hacked network. While Michael was doing all this outstanding hacking, at such a young age, he was still in school. He stayed up late throughout the night, hacking and maintaining connection with the TNT Force group and would manage to get his sleep in the first few classes of school. This sleep allowed him to stay up late throughout the night to continue hacking, a seamless cycle. While Michael was hacking into different networks with large bandwidth to contribute to the hacking group, he also used it for a plan of his own. Michael was very young and wanted to prove himself. Back then, there was not much financial gain from hacking at all. What he did was purely an act of wanting to show off and feel powerful. He wanted to show everyone what he was capable of. With all the networks that he had hacked into, he used them to create a master network. And on February 7th, 2000, the beginning of a new millennia, Michael would launch one of the first ever DDoS attacks. He launched it on what was at the time the most popular website, Yahoo. The funny thing about this is that he wasn't even at his computer when the attack was launched. He was at school. He was 15 years old. What he did was he set a timer on his computer at home to launch the attack. News spread quickly about the attack within the hacker community and on public news reports. The following day, someone else had shut down the website, buy.com. They saw that Yahoo went down and they wanted to prove they could do something similar. Although, Michael saw this as someone challenging it. So, on that following day, on February 8th, he would launch the second major attack on eBay. From here, he felt unstoppable. And over the next week, he would launch attacks on CNN, Dell, Amazon, and other major websites. The damage he caused from these attacks were originally estimated to be around $1.7 billion. And he managed to accomplish all of this from the bedroom of his dad's home on dial-up internet at 15 years old. Now, all of these massive sites had been taken down and the FBI were trying to find out who did it. Michael knew this and covered all these tracks. He left no sign of a digital footprint. The way that Michael was found was that he would brag about his hacking accomplishments on the IRC chat room. While boasting about this, his messages were seen by an undercover agent in the chat rooms, and the name Mafia Boy became the number one suspect. From here, agents would find all information they could about Mafia Boy, and found that the name was registered to an ISP in Canada. After further investigations, they discovered the Mafia Boy account was linked to a total net account, and had information such as a telephone number and an address. From here, they would monitor Michael's house and would eventually arrest him. The way he was arrested was the police went to Michael's house when he was at his friend's place in the middle of the night watching movies, and his dad was there to greet the agents. Michael would receive a call from his dad, and all his dad said was, they're here, and told Michael the agents wanted him to walk to the corner of the street and wait. Originally, he would deny that he did it. He was young. Besides the online account linking to his address, there was no hard evidence. They never got Michael's hard drive. He destroyed it. He attached magnets to it, hammered it, and threw it in the river. However, in January 2001, he would plead guilty to a lot of the charges, a total of 55 charges against him. After what was roughly eight months in open custody, he was sentenced to eight months in a youth detention center and one year probation. Additionally, he had restricted internet access and would have to pay a small fine of a thousand Canadian dollars. Given the size and the impact of the attacks, this is an extremely light sentence. 
it was only so light because he was a juvenile. If he was older when the attacks happened, he would likely still be in prison at this time. Currently, Michael is a reformed hacker and genuinely feels bad for the destruction he has caused in the past. He helps various companies identify security weaknesses in their system and helps improve security features. When he was 31 years old, he started his own company called Optimal Secure and would offer a penetration testing service for companies. And currently, he's the co-founder of DecentraWeb. DecentraWeb offers the creation of Web3 domains and brands itself as the future of decentralized domains. Thank you for watching. If you like that video, be sure to subscribe and click another video on screen if you're interested.